right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard here. Sports Talk Nation, Michael Cohen here with you. A lot to discuss. We're, gonna, we're not going to belabor the point because let's get right into it. The New York Jets making big moves here in the last couple of days of this offseason. So as uh, before we get into this, I just want to quote the uh, the poet laureate, if you will, uh, Mr. Alexander Pope, because it goes into a lot of what we want to want to discuss here with you today. Because he once said, Alexander Pope, "Be not the first by whom the new are tried, nor yet the last to lay the, the old aside." Why do I bring that up? I bring that up because over the last couple of weeks. A lot of people, especially right out, right out of the gate out of free agency, and the Jets didn't have themselves involved much at all as far as the free agent sweepstakes were, were concerned. So a lot of big names fly off the board very quickly, and we really didn't see the Jets get too, jump too deep into the pool uh, right away. They waited, they waited, fans got upset, fans got angry, they were protesting all over Twitter, all over social media. But Joe Douglas stayed patient. He stayed patient and then found a way to get his guys one way or the other. That is a heck of a job by the Jets. Now, are there concerns? Yes, there are concerns. We'll get into more of that in a minute. But you have to give the Jets a lot of credit here because they went out there. They had a goal in mind. They had a price point in mind. And they stuck to it and still found a way to get the players they needed to fortify a lot of problems. What were the issues going into this offseason for Gang Green? It was offensive line. They had to retool that in basically the entire offensive line, and they did that. They had to f- f- get another receiver in here. They did that. They had to bring back their kicker and punter. They did that. They had to bring get in get a backup quarterback in here to back up Aaron Rodgers. And, yes, they did that too. And, oh, by the way, Aaron Rodgers no longer uh, mentioned or concerned with the vice presidency uh, c- candidacy for Mr. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as he is now out of that particular race. As uh, Kennedy says, he's going to go with somebody else. So thankfully, Aaron Rodgers doesn't have to dip too much f- further into the political realm, thankfully, this summer. So the focus for the Jets is strictly on football and football alone, and that is a good thing. And the Jets getting Tyron Smith just in the last couple of days. Tyron Smith and then here on a Tuesday afternoon. Mike Williams signing a contract. Both of these guys on one-year deals. Both of these guys on contracts that the Jets can manage here this season. Uh, Kudos to Joe Douglas for getting it done. Also, let's give a shout-out to the Jet fans. Now, I don't know who this guy is, but on X, on Twitter, somebody named at NYJ underscore Matt. He went out out of his way. (laughs) And some of these Jet fans are great. Sometimes they hide in bushes. Sometimes they go out, they buy pizzas, they buy sandwiches. This guy got a, what was it, a, a pork roll sandwich? Or is it ham and, ham and egg? However you want to say it. I know they say it two different ways here in New Jersey. Got a sandwich, had it delivered to the Jets training facility for Mike Williams, specifically in mind. If he would like that sandwich, maybe he'll sign on the dotted line. Well, guess what? He signed on that dotted line, and yes, he actually did scoff down that sandwich as well. So as the Jets showed him eating that sandwich on online as well. So the Jet fans going out of their way to also find ways to recruit players to the, to the ball club as well. So now let's take a look very quickly here at these additions and the changes on this team. The offensive line being the biggest issue for the Jets going forward. They have answered that, at least in the short term, on one-year deals, making moves, to bring in a veteran experience in the, onto this team on the offensive line. They started off with the signing of John Simpson f- via the Ravens, then the trade with the Ravens to bring back Morgan Moses, make him your right tackle, and now getting Tyron Smith over at left tackle, a totally revamped offensive line. Joe Tipman can focus on playing center. Elijah Vera Tucker coming off with another injury-riddled year last year can focus on playing right guard. That is huge for the Jets moving forward. They don't think about, okay, let's put AVT here. Let's put Tittman over there. No. Focus those guys on positions where they need to be, and that's at guard and at center. That's number one. But you get a veteran player in Smith, for example, who is one of the best, considered one of the best left tackles in the sport, 
with the Dallas Cowboys, had a long, lengthy career as an all-pro, pro pro bowler, I think eight-time pro bowler. No-brainer, you try to bring somebody like that into the building, not just from a leadership leadership standpoint, but also to protect Aaron Rodgers' blind side. That is a huge addition. Now, are there concerns? Of course there are concerns. Why wouldn't there be concerns when it comes to the Jets, right? Yes, see, there are injury concerns with Smith over the last few years. 2020, he had to have neck surgery. 2021, uh, he had ankle injuries. And then 2022, he had a hamstring injury that limited him to, I think, only four games. So last year, however, played the 13 games, was second team all pro. So still when healthy, he is a menace on the left side of the offensive line. Again, does a great job in pass blocking, does a good job in run blocking, and is a big part of an offensive line, was a big part of Dallas's offensive line for a long time. And like I said, a no-brainer for the Jets to bring him in. Mike Williams, similar kind of situation. Jets bringing him in on a one-year deal. Now, this guy is a human highlight reel. Six foot four, tall, physical receiver who can make the tough catches in tight windows. I mean, some of the plays that this guy makes, I'm just going to show you a couple. I mean, you, you've you probably seen the highlights already. I'll show you a couple right here as well. But catching balls in tight windows, catching balls that normally shouldn't be caught at all, the guy has incredible hands. And here is a stat by Zach Rosenblatt. One drop in 23 games and only one in 160 targets overall. The guy is has Velcro for hands. He does. He just has Velcro for hands. And... The Jets needed that kind of player. They have not had that big physical target that they can use in the red zone for a while, maybe since Braylon Edwards and maybe even Brandon Marshall, for that matter, in the last, since, what, 2010, 2011? It's been a long time. Long time. Now they got that with Mike Williams, if he can stay healthy. And that's the big question because Mike Williams, last year coming off of the ACL injury that ended his season in Week 3, at that time, he had 19 catches for 200, 19 catches for 249 yards. Now, if he had played a full season, 16 games, for for example, he would have had close to 1,300 yards receiving if he had parlayed that over the course of a long season. So, he has not had that big breakout year since 2021, where he had nearly 1,200 yards receiving and nine touchdowns. Like I said, big time target. Injury concerns, but still worth it because, again, it's a one-year contract to bring a player in here who could be an impact player for you right away and give your quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, a target he desperately needs, a target that he needs to find, especially in the red zone. Now, what does this do for the Jets moving forward? Well, it gives them so much flexibility in the draft. It's going to be fun to watch what the Jets do in the draft next month because they can do one of many things. They could either stay put at 10. They could take another offensive lineman, which I wouldn't be against at all. Again, Smith and Moses, for example, both those guys at age 33. You want love having those two guys be your anchors on the right and left side of the offensive line. But again, long term, you got to think about that. What are you going to do if one of those tackles drops to you at 10? Do you think about taking one of them? Let's just say Joe Alt, for example, not likely to drop it to 10. But let's say if he does, do you take that player if you're the Jets? Wide receiver. If Rome Odunze, Odunze, if Rome Odunze, wide receiver out of Washington, if he drops to 10, do the Jets take him? He is one of the highly touted receivers coming out of college football this year out of Washington. Do you take him if he's there at 10? Or do you trade down and get multiple picks, maybe a late first rounder, maybe another second rounder in there because the Jets do not have a second rounder this year? And maybe make something happen where you can get a receiver or an offensive lineman or, dare I say, maybe even a quarterback in the second round to be your bridge in a couple of years. Think about that for a second. So these are all the different options that are on the table for Gang Green here in 2024. So a really solid job by Joe Douglas and company in getting that done. Uh, so... Who has won the offseason? I hate that question. But who's won the offseason? I'll say this. The loudest teams have been so, I mean, there's been a lot of moves. I would say the loudest teams have been teams like Pittsburgh. Obviously, they traded for uh, Justin Fields. They signed Russell Wilson. They they give themselves a very unique 
quarterback situation, obviously, where Wilson's probably going to be the starter. But, hey, Justin Fields gets to learn from Russell Wilson. That's not bad for him at this point in his career. And they're both in Pittsburgh, which is a great spot. They could also be in line potentially for Justin Jefferson. So the Steelers are making some noise. And the Giants have had a very interesting offseason. Yes, they lose Saquon Barkley to the Eagles. That hurts them, obviously. But they've made a lot of different moves to try to pad that together. They uh, obviously bring in Devin Singletary, who's, not a, who's no slatch at running back, who's a good player. They brought in a couple of offensive linemen. Now the, and they also brought in uh, Brian Burns, uh, one of the best linebackers in the sport, edge, line, edge rusher. Signed him to a five-year deal. He's only 25 years old. Good move by the Giants to make that trade with Carolina. So they made some sure moves there, and also Drew Locke is now the backup. So what does that do for the Giants? Do they still take a quarterback as rumored in the first round, or do they too, like the Jets, potentially try to trade out of that pick and get multiple picks in return? So those are the interesting, those are the teams that have been the most interesting so far here in the offseason. And like I said once again, the Jets so far looking looking very good in this offseason. So like Alexander Pope said, be not the first by whom the new are tried, nor yet the last to set, to lay the old aside. And Joe Douglas has lived by that moniker here in the 2024 offseason. Like and subscribe. We're approaching 1,000 people. We're approaching it. Like and subscribe. Let's get over 1,000 right here on the Sports Talk Nation.